Welcome, my name is Dr. Steve Young. In this video, I'm going to show you some basic concepts that I think can improve personal and training quality for every personal and trainer. You see, there are a lot of professionals and experts out there telling you this exercise does this, this technique does that. The main thing you need to understand is pure biomechanics. It all breaks down to physics and force diagrams. When you understand these concepts, you can basically look at any exercise and understand one, what stress or what emphasis is that exercise placing upon your body? And two, with a little bit deeper understanding, you can figure out, is that exercise safe for your body? And what this does is it allows you to start to see exercises from a deeper level, more than just you know what muscles are being emphasized, what muscles are being worked, but really what forces and what directions is that happening in. So I'm gonna go into, let's say, a squat and different variations of a squat, and this way you can understand why certain stances emphasize certain parts of your glutes or your quads. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just say wide squat. So you can just imagine if someone goes wide and they squat down, now I'm gonna give you a side view. The, the two things you wanna look for is um, what are the joints, what are the axes, the pivot points, right? So if you have a seesaw, the pivot point is where the seesaw is touching the bottom. Okay, so you want to look at oh, what joints are involved in this movement. Well, the two main joints that are moving, of course, it's your knee, right, and your hip joint. They're both flexing at the same time when you do a squat. So depending upon how my body is positioned, that dictates if it's working the quads more or the hips more. So let's give you a side view for you to understand what's happening. If I have my feet close, okay, and I squat down like this with my upper body pretty upright, what's happening is my center of mass, my trunk, as I'm going down, is pretty close to my hip, right? I'm here. So the other way to say it is it's also pretty far away from my knee joint, okay? Versus a wide squat, right? If I squat down like this, and I sort of stay in a ideal squat position, my center of mass is now closer to my knees versus this position, which is farther from my knees, okay? So this being closer, if we drew a vertical line down, that distance to my knee, right, would be about here, versus a close squat like this, now it's a much farther distance, okay? So these distances mean everything. See, the reason of why it's squat when you go down like this works your hips more, it's because as I'm getting my body more forward, Every inch that is going forward, it's taking um, more stress on on the hips and less through the knees. And if I lean back, it's the opposite. So this literally controls what body part you're emphasizing. Is it the quad or the hip? Because I'm just sort of shifting my center of mass closer or farther away from the pivot points, right? So if you're upright close like this, my body weight's farther away from the knee, if I simply just lean forward more, now it's gonna work my hips more and my quads less. You can feel this, literally, if you just do it on your own. If you just kind of squat down, keep upright, kind of feel what's burning, your quads. If you lean forward, now feel what's burning. It's gonna be more your glutes, okay? So this transition of your center of mass dictates what muscles are working. And you can apply this concept to any exercise, right? So if you're doing a bicep curl, at the very top, if you keep it like this, now the weight is here. Your pivot point's your elbow joint. It's pretty far from your elbow vertically. If you end up in a bicep curl like this, now the joint and the weight going down, it's pretty close to your elbow. Very little resistance on the bicep. If you do a side lateral, if you kind of bend your elbow versus straightening the elbow, this literally doubles the distance to your shoulder joint versus being bent. This, let's say if you had 10 pounds of resistance, 10 pounds here is like 20 pounds when you extend the elbow. So if you're trying to work the shoulder more, of course that's gonna add more resistance and more pressure to the shoulder. So understanding the concept of leverage and looking into biomechanics and physics can mean everything in helping you understand what exercises are doing what.